Good evening, and welcome to CounterPoint. My name is Carl Scala, and I represent the third ward on the Columbia City Council. One of the changes we've made uh, recently uh, uh, on the council is the, to, to process citizen input to host regular coffee chat hours at a local coffee house. My colleague Jerry Wade hosts uh, chat hours at, at, at a similar, at, across, at about the same across town. As an extension of that, tonight we invite three citizens themselves volunteers with many years of commitment to Columbia into CATV Studio B to discuss the process surrounding the selection of a new high school site and processes in general as Columbia expands over the next few years. With me are Pat Smith. Um, she is the, has been the chair of the Boone County Planning and Zoning Commission for the past nine years. <clears throat> she has served for several years in that capacity and been appointed to additional boards and commissions as a result, including the Road Infrastructure Committee that began in 2004. Welcome. Thank you. Um, next is Sarah Reed. She's the current president for Parents for Columbia Public Schools, but she's here in, in not in that official capacity. She's a lawyer, mediator, and communications consultant. Her youngest child graduated from CPS last year, Columbia Public School System. She served as a facilitator for one of the largest topic groups during the visioning development is the group, which was subdivided into three other topic groups, neighborhoods, natural resources, and planned and managed growth. Welcome. Next is, 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 is Doug Hunt. He's a professor of English here at MU, <coughs> served as our neighborhood topic group leader during Columbia's soon to be concluded visioning process. Doug has written several thoughtful letters to the editor about the location of the new high school and concerns about energy usage, sprawl, and infrastructure costs. Doug has a daughter enrolled in the Columbia Public School System. Though, though we want to use the, the, the Columbia Public uh, School uh, issue, the, the, the site selection, the high school site selection process, kind of as an example in terms of the processes that are going on in the community, um, I also want to broaden the discussion, if we can, uh, a little bit about processes in general and how, and how these decision-making processes um, illustrated by this example with the, with the public high school selection system uh, might serve the community in general. So although we've had much information uh, flowing around Columbia and in the local press about these processes um, and the school board selection site, citizens started organizing opposition to the site and many thoughtful comments uh, started uh, rising about water, sewer, road suitability, sprawl, energy costs, all these words that we really don't have definitions about and transporting students to and from the new high school site. I just want to kind of open up the discussion here and try and uh, ask a couple of questions to get things started. Uh, the first of which, what parts of the process have worked well in this site selection process? And what's, what parts of the process haven't worked as well? Um, we've engaged in the past year in the visioning process as well. So if you have any comments, would, you like to, would somebody like to start uh, discussing this, the issue of of the high school site selection process and, and this whole, uh, the whole area of, of communication in the city? Uh, I'd certainly be willing to start. And I, you know, I like <coughs> the question of uh, what worked well and what, what didn't work so well, though I'll have to, in a way, answer in inverse order because I respect so much the way the um, uh, public school administration, the school board has been willing to rethink uh, the situation that they're in. So you know, it appears to me that what started off not working so well really had to do with the sort of perhaps premature fixation on a single site that was available and seemed to solve a pressing problem for a busy organization. You know, pragmatism, uh, I think, sometimes forces people to make decisions fairly quickly. Um, and, um, and sometimes, it's like a student who kind of covers his paper while he's writing, sometimes to try to do the work in a, in a, in a closed way to be efficient. Um, and I think that really the citizens' responses largely was, were to that um, feeling that they had been closed out in a process that was driven to arrive at a conclusion fairly quickly. Uh, what I think has worked uh, very well, I mean, I, and the, a lot of journalists uh, deserve uh, credit for this, a lot of uh, public-minded citizens for becoming involved, but I, but I do have to give strong credit to uh, the school board and, and to come up with public schools to have the courage to say we're willing to stop the process now and, and actually open up the discussion more than we have before and to invite some of the people who really had problems with the, uh, with the site selection onto the committee to discuss it. So I guess that would be my view of where we are now. 
I would echo that uh, it was a very good step by the school district to be willing to relook and be open to information. I would say uh, even before that, uh, they made efforts to reach out to the public mm -hmm. on a lot of issues that had to do with the new high school. They had uh, extensive public engagement on um, uh, grade configuration, for example. Mm -hmm. And during the bond issue, they had uh, PowerPoint and speakers that went out and talked to many public groups. And I know the issue of a site came up. Uh, there didn't appear to be a lot of controversy around it at that time. Um, and uh, I think there was an expectation among many in the public that there would be a lot more uh, discussion like mm -hmm. there was on the grade mm -hmm. configuration. Mm -hmm. And that actually type of discussion, I think, um, uh, whetted the public appetite for right. more discussion. Mm -hmm. And what I see uh, kind of happened was two different models colliding. Mm -hmm. One, a broad public engagement model, uh, whether that was for input or decision making, and an older model that says when we have enough data uh, for the drivers mm -hmm. for this decision, we go ahead as the decision makers. And uh, the school board in many elections, uh, people ask two questions, test scores and cost per student. And uh, mm -hmm. when you're looking at land that uh, uh, you've got available, it meets the need for the new high school in terms of space, it meets the need for growth, and it appears to be a very reasonable cost. It may have appeared as a simpler decision mm -hmm. than the public viewed it as. And so now we're raising issues of um, how should that decision be simply bounded by school costs or should it take into <clears throat> account the broader uh, societal costs and the longer term mm -hmm. inputs on taxpayers. And so I, I think we've, we've really had kind of a collision of um, uh, both what's the proper process and what's the right paradigm and we're talking about it a little bit after the fact and mm -hmm. uh, going forward I would hope we could as mm -hmm. a community figure out ways to address some of those process issues ahead of time. Yeah I, I, I really like where this the conversation is going because I, I my intention here was to, to try and broaden this aspect of and I, I like mm -hmm. you suggested Doug I, I think I really appreciate the fact that the school board, in this particular case, uh, took a look at this and saw the need uh, for, for more, to get more public input. I think originally, at least from my perspective, um, there was the, the, the feeling out there that although the public was certainly was contacted and some of the information was distributed, some of the questions weren't exactly what they mm -hmm. expected. That is, the, the public was asked at large um, do we need another high school? And I think that was resounding yes. Mm -hmm. That's why the bond issue passed. Um, but the, the, the question that wasn't stressed, or at least I, I assume it was asked, but it really wasn't stressed, was that where should that high school be? And, and there's going to be another issue that comes up too, and that is um, how are the districts going to be distributed, or the students going to be distributed to these districts once the school site selection is passed? And the school board knows very well uh, that the public has always supported the school system in this town, but it's going to require other bond issues to make that a reality. And that's actually one thing I think the school district did well. Instead mm -hmm. of going out and asking for all the money up front, they said, we're going to come in in three phases, so you will be able to hold us accountable for each step of the way. I think that showed a lot of goodwill and desire to be accountable to the public. One of the things that has concerned me a little is the way the responses have unfolded. Mm -hmm. I think uh, certainly we have a lot of good, informed, concerned citizens, mm -hmm. and they've got uh, good points to raise. Uh, however, not all the people raising uh, concerns assumed goodwill, and mm -hmm. there, you know, there's a lot of charges of conspiracy, incompetence, things like that, and uh, that concerns me as a school parent. Um, we try to recruit good leadership. We want to retain good leadership and I think we have to respect people who are uh, trying to do their job. I do think we as the public are redefining what that job is and what that's we right. as a community <coughs> need right. and you mentioned visioning. That's part sure. of that process. So we're in 
kind of a chaotic period. Well, and I absolutely agree with you. Casting aspersions get us, gets us nowhere. I mean, we really need to find out, not, not attack each other. We need to find out what works and implement those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Pat, do you, what, what's the county perspective on, on well, this Well, I issue? can't speak for the county, of course. No, I'm not, no, I'm not <laughs> suggesting. <laughs> but I'll speak for myself. <laughs> um, I think, and, and you know, Carl, that I would certainly be dealing with this in terms of land use. Sure. And, and the work that we did before when we met as a joint planning and zoning commissions, a lot of it was to, to define areas that we thought would be acceptable for growth in the urban fringe, mm -hmm. and then we also mm -hmm. identified rural areas. And I think one of the things that concerns me is that this really reaches beyond the area where we are. And I don't, and I know that, as Pat, you know, as has been said, the school board has a lot of things on their mind, and its land use may not be one of them. But this is a community decision. I mean, this is a Columbia Public Schools for the county and the and the city, and this is a community decision. And no one ever bothered even to talk to the planning department yeah. of the county yeah. about yeah. this. And um, I just think these are because you you know as well as I do that once this school is built, wherever it's built, growth is going to follow it. And so, is this the way we want our community to grow? based on a decision that's made by the school board. Mm -hmm. And the school board are elected officials, and so they do need to be held accountable. And I agree with Doug, I think the press did a great job. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we have a responsible press in this community, and everything should be transparent. And so that's my concern, is just that it, it was we were not part of the decision-making process, and maybe we shouldn't be, but I would think they would at least have wanted some more information. I mean, you know, there are plans, 2020, the Metro 2020 plans, a lot of plans to talk about how roads will be developed, what the infrastructure is out there, and it just isn't there. And if they would, you know, look at that, I thought it would have been a, it would have had a little more impotent, you know, importance when people approached it and said, oh yeah, it's a well thought out decision. Mm -hmm. I, I would say if you do look at the facilities plan that the uh, school district put out there, which doesn't go directly to the site, they did mm -hmm. look at a lot of the plans that were out there in mm -hmm. thinking generally about uh, mm -hmm. schools and facilities. And one of the issues we're in collision on is what should they be held accountable for? Uh, uh, I hear, and I don't disagree, that going forward a lot more coordination would be good as we uh, grow as a city, a county, a region, and we're seeing that theme very much come out of the visioning process, intergovernmental coordination. Uh, historically, the law hasn't required that, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm interested in uh, hearing about things like intergovernmental cooperation or partnership agreements or how we might <coughs> approach that so in the future there's a clear understanding that uh, when these issues are interlinked this is this is how we different bodies agree to interact so there's there's a clearer mm -hmm. path for people there are some good models out there too that one of the the some of the good work that was done by journalists actually were some student journalists writing for the Missouri and uh, Jules Frainer uh, was one and uh, Kendra Lukert. I wanted to get those names right because I thought they did such a great job mm -hmm. um, starting this summer. And, and they went to the trouble to ask uh, other school districts how they went about doing site selection processes. And, and what they found out was really quite interesting. As you say, the legal constraints are, in a sense, minimal in terms mm -hmm. of consultation being necessary. But if you see what uh, Fort Zumwalt does, for instance, they say, we don't have to go to planning and zoning, but we feel we should go to planning yeah, and zoning have to because to the community needs to. All our regulations mm -hmm. allow schools right. wherever you want. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And, you know, and I think, uh, you know, we may, we don't make decisions about siting schools very often. So there's a sort of a learning curve, I suppose. Exactly. Uh, other districts may make them more often, and it seems like the ones that make the decisions more often have a more consultative style, perhaps. That mm -hmm. may be th the new model. Well, the Columbia, Columbia Independent School came to county planning before mm -hmm. they made their site selection mm -hmm. and I, to I evaluate their sites. So, I mean, it, it's mm -hmm. a thought. Mm -hmm. I don't want to dwell on this too much, but I, I just want to give a little bit of background, maybe to some mm -hmm. of the audience. From the perspective of the city council, I remember uh, hearing about this whole site selection process. I mean, er obviously, early we knew that the, the Columbia Public Schools were in the business of, of selecting a site and so on, and the bond issue and, and all of that. And, and, and Phyllis Chase, Dr. Chase, and Carla de Spain came to the City Council uh, several weeks ago, I guess it was, to thank us in advance for helping them because they're going to need the support of the city as well as the county um, to support mm -hmm. this effort, uh, which has, has historically been supported. Um, what some of the questions that were raised during that session, though, really had to do with this this intergovernmental cooperation issue, which I think is critical to the to not only to the school site selection process, but to lots of processes. 
I remember talking to the presiding commissioner in the county. We were at an economic summit in, in Jefferson City when this issue came up, and we were talking about the notification because we first heard about. I first heard about this um, in the minutes of the Planning and Zoning Commission, mm -hmm. City Minutes, uh, Planning and Zoning Commission minutes, when uh, the director of planning, Tim Teddy, suggested mm -hmm. that he had gone out with the Columbia mm -hmm. School System to take a look at several sites, and that's the first that I knew that mm -hmm. there was any city involvement. In this in the school system uh, uh, site selection group, um, and as that proceeded, and 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 as I started talking to people like uh, uh, Ken Pearson and so on, um, he said, "Well, yes, he did get a call from Superintendent Chase, um, but it but the call was after they signed the contract for the for the piece of property, mm -hmm. and again, w to their credit, I think they have done the right thing. They've now now uh, appointed a commission." A distinguished commission, and I'm anticipating some of the re results from that. In fact, I have heard from from one of the commissioners who is is raising additional questions that I think are critical to this issue. Not the least of which has to do with estimates for infrastructure right. costs and all the rest mm -hmm. of it, and this cooperation that we've been talking about. And this even this even translates to to beyond the the the, the cooperation between the public schools. And and the uh, and the uh, city council, for example, it, 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 it translates to cooperation between the county and the city council and, and other intergovernmental uh, agencies. Any comments about how we might improve this situation in terms of of of, of how we how we do that? We don't necessarily formally have to to, to ratify uh, these these agreements, but certainly we need to we need to be in touch with each other mm -hmm. a lot more than mm -hmm. we were in the past. I would note, just going back and then answering your question, when they signed the contract, which they publicly announced, uh, they said it might be used for a school or it might just be held. It was a generous gift that's of value to the district, whether or not a uh, school is, is built on it. Um, and so that, that was a narrow decision. The broader decision is, what do we use the site for? And that gets into the land use issues I think uh, you raised. I think the... Um, visioning process, uh, which uh, everyone will have the chance to uh, vote on this Thursday, September 13, in terms of priorities, uh, does address some of the themes we're mm -hmm. touching on, more transparent mm -hmm. government, mm -hmm. um, uh, use of uh, land, uh, mm -hmm. when you put in infrastructure, how it gets paid for, uh, things like that, and I believe from my read through, a number of the recommendations talk about task forces or um, commissions that might coordinate a number of different uh, bodies. I know in some of my other work that often <coughs> officials can be reluctant to give up their authority or ability to act by, um, you know, agreeing to some type of oversight. So uh, I'm not sure how rigid it could be, but certainly mm -hmm. there could be a lot more discussion of what are our common values, uh, which do we not want to compromise, where should we coordinate, what information should we be sharing at what level. Um, uh, so those are, those are some issues that I would really like to see the city and the county, mm -hmm. the affected school districts, and fire, police, water, they're all uh, well, utilities pick, coordinate. Oh, I'm sorry, but you know we did have a visioning plan for the county. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everyone seems to yeah, forget about right. the county's that was vision a long, plan. Yeah, and a long time ago. Well, and one <laughs> of the things was is that general, and it involved people in, in Columbia, obviously. Right. And one of the things was that people did appreciate the rural climate of the community, mm -hmm. and it, it really talked about what people did appreciate. Mm -hmm. And so, as a leader in that in the community, I would think I might take some of that into consideration, right. formally or informally in making, you know, who should be involved. and I mean, it, it was an important document and some good things came out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, um, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there is, we need to have greater cooperation between the county and the city jurisdiction Absolutely. in many things. The, the, a lot, it, this is kind of fun because this is kind of anticipated a question that I had written down and the question had to do with Columbia spent the past year engaged in the visioning process, um, in citizen visioning. And could, could part of that process have been useful in this school site selection process? And, I mean, is this, is, in other words, is this exclusively a school board uh, decision? We, you're t you've been touching on this a little bit, this cooperation. Recently, in my experience, we took a, a, a city-sponsored trip 
um, to West Lafayette, Indiana to t take a look at uh, a research park, a Purdue Research Park, that has been a very successful. They got started in 1961, and, and there is some, some uh, considerable energy in our community to, to develop a research park. And the overwhelming uh, uh, message that we got from the folks that had this successful uh, uh, program in place was the cooperation between the council or and, the, and the mayor, the business people, um, some of these foundations and boards and, and so on. I mean, that, that was pretty clear. The only reason this was a success was not necessarily a success just from a business point of view. It was a success from a community point of view. That's right. And I think that's, uh, that, that should override these, I mean, the difficulties we may have right now with the site selection process, we'll overcome those. And I think the, the public school system is doing the right thing by appointing the commission and so on. Um, I think the place we really need to go is with this inter, intergovernmental or inter, inter, interbody cooperation. I think that's the future of what Columbia is all about. Uh, I agree with that. Uh, you know, I'm the, I'm the, the least, um, tied in to any official function of the people here in some ways, not having a portfolio at all. So I want to say something about the <laughs> citizens and, and sure. that. that I, I, I think that um, the way mm. that public bodies talk about cost and the way that citizens hear about cost is beginning to shift, and that's a shift that ought to be encouraged. There's a tendency for, and it's perfectly understandable, a, an organization with a budget to work from to regard cost as what comes out of their budget. How much is it going to cost, for instance, to acquire this site? And I think that citizens are becoming a little more sophisticated about you know, what does the total cost package look like? Changes that we may like or may not like in terms of the style of life that we're talking about, uh, environmental costs, cost of maintenance, cost of transportation, cost of fuel, all these factors which uh, it's easy to be naive about when, when initial cost sure. is proposed, people are beginning to pay attention to. And that actually forces a broader view. I mean, mm -hmm. suddenly there are a lot of people you need to talk to when you make That's a decision right. because That's it's true. not just sitting here any longer for you to make. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I mm -hmm. mean, one of, the, one of the places we really need to go, and we're, we, it's scheduled. Actually, we're, we were kind of on the council. We've been kind of waiting on the visioning process to, to, to give an indication of where we want to go. So although things haven't been on hold, per se, uh, we have been anticipating some of the things getting back and and it's and it's one of those things is one of the things that was important to me when I first got on the council or, or first ran for the city council had to do with the I the issue of growth management planning mm -hmm. which and, and and to me every infrastructure is everything infrastructure is a school and all, all kinds of other things and it falls into this rubric of growth mm -hmm. management planning and that sometimes becomes a problem for a lot of people when they think about it, but it shouldn't be because very simply what it says, really, is you tend to, to grow in those areas that you either already have infrastructure or you anticipate That's are right. going to, to mm. become, to have the resources for infrastructure. So you don't have to duplicate some of these unnecessary costs. And I, I sure think that's where we're headed, and I think there, there's going to be some serious discussions about that. And I think that, like mm -hmm. you suggested, mm -hmm. provides the basis mm -hmm. for a very broad-based view and co uh, inter co cooperation between lots of these uh, mm -hmm. governmental bodies. And mm -hmm. I think visioning uh, mm -hmm. uh, helped along mm -hmm. uh, two things that I think are part of the transition we're doing as a community and in terms of process um, historically. You know, there was the school board decisions, the city council decisions, uh, and you know, people kind of made them in silos, uh, mm -hmm. and they had authority and how were elected officials accountable at elections, mm -hmm. and and that is a historical view. We elect people to make the decisions, and they make the decisions that uh, are put before them. I think there's a much greater public awareness, and visioning has hastened this as how interconnected all these things are, how complex they are, how many mm -hmm. trade-offs there are mm -hmm. that if we don't think about up front, have costs down the road. And another part of the historic structure was almost a fear of public engagement because you had very positionally based public engagement, mm -hmm. uh, very uh, critical, attack-oriented, or private interest-oriented. And I think with this growing awareness, and at least I hope with this growing <laughs> awareness of interconnectedness, there's many more people willing to engage in dialogue. And we saw that in the uh, visioning process, both Doug and I were involved with the development group, where people really learned to say, okay, 
you have this information and I have this information. You have this perspective and I have that perspective. How can the pieces fit together? How many mm -hmm. different ways? And they found common ground. Mm -hmm. And promoting more of those dialogues can only, only benefit us all. Mm -hmm. I, th I think just let me just throw this out as well. I think the world has changed. Mm -hmm. um, the the mm -hmm. dialogue has changed. It's no longer, it, it's no longer even acceptable to run things from the top down. At one point in time, that's the way that's mm -hmm. the way the world worked. And and when people interacted, they had to go to meetings physically. They had to mm -hmm. go to meetings, and sometimes they weren't at the right time, and so on and so forth. And they had to rely on other folks. That isn't the case anymore. Now, when someone is, sees something in the news, like, for example, the school site selection process, maybe they like it, maybe they don't, but they start to talk to someone else to try and find out whether they like it or they don't, and then they, they get together, and pretty soon they're contacting people by emails, and it's on a listserv. And so a, as a city official or some of these intergroups, inter intergovernmental groups, you have to function in that environment, and you, have, and you better like it. <laughs> because that's the way it is. Mm. Uh, and, but it's very liberating in some ways because, mm. because we have tremendous talent in this, in this city and to tap into it is, is kind, of, kind of remarkable. Mm. And from a citizen's point of view, to, to wait to see a public official make a mistake and then decide to throw the bums out, that's too late. Well, it, and the citizens need to be involved all the time, obviously, and not just wait to uh, have that moment. Mm. There can be a tendency on the part of citizens, though, too, to jump in and say it's us versus them, and mm -hmm. that doesn't promote dialogue. So, Absolutely. you know, how do we say we need to listen to this now? We need to talk together. Uh, both sides have to find points of um, interaction that move things along and uh, allow for that broader consideration mm -hmm. of the long term. This, I think this has been a terrific discussion for this initial session of Counterpoint. Uh, I think uh, I'd like to thank everybody. I'd like to thank Pat Smith and Sarah Reed and, uh, and Doug Hunt uh, for, for joining me uh, this evening. Um, I'm looking forward to doing this again, and, and I, I welcome any of the public's input uh, as to how we, what we're going to do some of the topics and how we're going to organize this. Um, thanks a lot for listening, and I hope you tune in again. Thank you.